of not only marijuana law reform, but broad drug law reform generally. Today we hear from a liberal Democratic congressman from an eastern state who just three weeks ago introduced legislation that would repeal federal restrictions prohibiting states from allowing medical use of marijuana. And that is something I have seen firsthand with my late wife, that it works. And in introducing this legislation, Representative Frank was clever enough to put it in terms of being state, states' rights legislation, which no doubt discomforted a number of his colleagues. When you have a congressman that clever and that wonderful, you want to cherish it. You want to re-elect him. And that is indeed what the voters of the 4th District of Massachusetts have done every year since 1980 when they first elected Representative Barbara Frank to Congress. Prior to that, he served in the Massachusetts State Legislature. He was Administrative Assistant to U.S. Congressman Michael Harrington. He was Chief Assistant to Mayor Kevin White of Boston. He's a graduate of Harvard College and the Harvard Law School. And according to ABC News, he is one of the best debaters in the House of Representatives in years. I'm glad we don't have to debate him. For those patients who need marijuana to relieve pain and suffering, or for those of us who just want to be left alone by the government on the marijuana issue, on many other issues involving privacy, Representative Barney Frank is a true hero. And we are proud to have him with us at the Normal Conference today, Representative Frank. I was given a very good topic, and I appreciate the structuring by the organizers, and it was to talk a good deal about how to focus your efforts. And I'm glad to do that. I was glad to hear in the last minutes of the previous speech, which I heard, a similar focus. As elections approach, politicians tend increasingly only to tell audiences things which they are sure everyone in the audience fervently believes. That, if you are in a tough race, is often necessary, but it is as boring as hell. So I have to forbear that. My own view is, other than in your own district very shortly before a tough election, if you are pretty sure everybody who listens to you is going to agree with everything you say, why don't you just go to dinner and save everybody's time? Well, obviously, the case for change is overwhelming. Let me just say, with regard to the medical marijuana issue, I think that's a very good model, not just for medical marijuana, but for the whole set of issues about how it ought to be treated legally. That is, I think one of the, let me begin by saying, I think one of the things people want to argue for is the right of each state to set its policy regarding how marijuana is going to be treated. We've always talked about the benefit of the U.S. government as a laboratory. Now, we will run into some problems that you might not expect with conservative. My conservative colleagues, with the rare exceptions like Jerry Johnson, are being hypocritical here, not only in disregarding state rights, but, as some of you will be aware, conservatism on social issues in America, unlike conservatism in other parts of the world historically, has become very popular, and they appeal to people. And I have heard over and over again, whether it was the death penalty or affirmative action or similar issues that are socially divisive, that we have a solemn duty to listen to the people. And when the people vote down affirmative action, how dare you try to resurrect it? And if the people are for the death penalty, then of course you should be for the death penalty. And, of course, the most glaring example we have in America today of elected officials ignoring the clear, official, formal vote of the people, not polls, not random samples, but the results of open and free elections in which the people go to the polls and measure to their opinion.